vintage jewel all transistor I guess that means 10 transistor pocket portable radio this is a beauty it really is made in USA I have never heard of Jewel before. It's definitely not a, well, to me, it's not a major brand like Zenith or RCA or one of those. And this came, this came in a um, box with a Channel Master radio that we already did a video on and something else. And, um,. So what do we got here? We got mixer, IF, IF, detector, oscillator, driver, four power output transistors. Do whatever you can to get your transistor count up because it matters. Made in USA. Super heterodyne receiver. I didn't know. I wonder if Sam's covered this. TS10. 131.62. And initially in the last video I looked at this and I believe it has been recapped backwards. I don't know if it shows there, but those two new capacitors, the ground is connected to the outside. And generally these, these radios, most of them use PNP germanium transistors. Not all, but most of them do. And when you're using PNP germanium transistors, usually the outside ground foil trace is connected to the positive. So we're going to check that before we do anything. It's working on modern stuff, it's real easy to just say, well, this outside foil trace is ground or battery negative, and with these it's usually not. So let me get it apart. Let's take a peek at that. So this is kind of interesting. Obviously someone has been in here big time. We have the Japanese style IF transformers. Uh, some of the diodes, I mean, some of the transistors are just used as diodes. You can see two of the leads are just tied together on this one. This one's got one of the three leads just cut off. Is it, is it a, no, that's not a correct statement. It's there. It's covered with black. Uh, it's got some Soviet germaniums down there, some MP40s, which I wonder because it does look like the negative or the black goes to one side of the volume control. Oh boy. And then the other, well, goes to the power switch on the volume control. See, the negative goes here to the power switch. And then the other side of the power switch goes here. Uh, I wonder if this whole thing is backwards. Because MP40 is a germanium transistor. And if this was replaced and connected backwards, oh boy. Um, this is where schematic really comes into hand, in handy, to possibly deal with years of botched repairs. It could be that this is hooked up backwards, and all the capacitors are in backwards. Or, it could be this is all hooked up right, and these are all NPN transistors. So, I guess the first thing we need here is a lot of research. Um, do we have any numbers on these transistors? Okay, there are no... There are no um, numbers, intelligible numbers, on any of these transistors. And SAMS did not cover this. So this has some numbers on it. 2N 136... 2N134, 
2N194. I'm pretty sure those are germaniums. 2N408 is a germanium. So is this thing hooked up wrong? Something's something's not something ain't right here. Something is not right here. 2N408. I'm Two N four oh eight transistor. Check out these pictures. No, you stupid thing. Why don't you learn English? There we go. Two N four oh eight transistor. Yeah, transistor G, G uh, germanium PNP. So there you go. So something's not right here. I sit down and study this with magnifying glass. I'm going to go with 6 volts here. We're going to just give it some power. I'm assuming that whoever worked on it gave it power. And So the airplane is making my brain melt. Stupid. Um, this is positive. This is negative. This is positive, right? Okay, but this is negative. So this goes here, and this goes here. Fifty-eight milliamps, and our light bulb is on. Let me. Let me reverse it and see what we get. 34 milliamps. Our light bulb is sort of on a little bit and 34 milliamps. We have no sound. I have a feeling this thing is hosed. I have a feeling this thing is really hosed. going to just take a lot of analysis. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the audio driver transistor out. This is the audio driver. This is the driver transformer. This is the output transformer. And it looks like the emitter is connected to directly to the rail here, which in that case, if this is PNP, that would be positive. Like I said, this is wired. This thing is connected backwards and all the capacitors are connected backwards. But in order to... Yeah, I need to double verify myself because it's real easy to get turned around with this stuff. Yeah, it looks like the the emitter which is marked with the little tab is connected to the outside foil positive but let me let me this might be one of those where you just have to remove every single transistor and test them okay it is a transistor it does have some leakage this is the driver and number three is the emitter so this thing is all backwards all right a, a correction and I'm allowed to make mistakes and I don't cover them up. Uh, I had to go back and look at the previous clip on this transistor. It was NPN. Now I'm checking these and they are PNP. Uh, on these the emitter is connected to ground. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. On these the emitter, which is the little tab here, is connected through a 10 ohm resistor to the positive wire. So it looks like maybe he did wire it right. Uh, and this uses a combination of NPN and PNP transistors. So I have to pretty much eat everything I said so far. Anyway, these two test good. Um, the two MP40s 
I need to pull those out and see if they're wired in right. These, uh, these often do not just drop in the same lead pattern as these. So let me keep looking at it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. It's going to work and I'm going to come up with a, uh, a proper explanation here without assumption. So let me get to that point. All of these transistors are good according to this. And yes, the pinout is the same on these as these. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm struggling with what I'm seeing. And I might have to draw this out uh, because these are connected base to emitter. And I, I don't understand this 10 ohm resistor the whole thing is like just a big loop back to itself. I don't get it. This is where a schematic comes in handy. I can draw this. All right, here's a schematic. And yeah, once you draw it out, it looks legit. So here's your bias thing. It looks like they added a 20K onto the bottom of the board to... Uh, get the bias right. So this is your driver transformers here comes in to your bases uh, and then we got two 1Ks. I guess this is um, your bias. It's like a Darlington setup. And then this 10 ohm, that one was replaced. That's a curiosity to me. But that 10 ohm goes up to positive and then the center of this is ground so and then your speaker is connected here so that 10 ohm might be high I wonder if he misread that I wonder if that is supposed to be 1 ohm anyway um, I got right now I have the transistors out and it's idling along at 7.6 milliamps so I wonder we should put the signal tracer on it and see if there's anything coming out of the driver transistor if it's tuning. All right, we got our signal tracer hooked up. Way out of alignment. Way out of alignment. K and X is almost at the top of the band, but it's working, and that's... Let's see about the base of the this transistor. Oh, that's the that's the base of the second transistor. Um, We got data. We got data going into the bases of both the audio output transistors. So I wonder why it was drawing so much current. I got it at 9 volts right now. It's drawing uh, 12 milliamps. It's kind of a kind of a gas guzzler. 12 milliamps with no output transistors, that's that's 
kind of a vacuum. I put it back together uh, so it makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, and I, I still didn't find a problem with all my hot air talk at the beginning of this thing. I was wrong with the, everything being reversed and inverted. So the way it was, two of these transistors were replaced, the, like these two. So what I did is when I put it back together, I put the uh, these two right here as the originals and these two here as the Soviet MP40s. And that's, that's all I did. You can see how I put it back together. And it seems to be working. It's just it's way out of alignment and it's, it's not very loud. I did leave that resistor on the bottom disconnected. Um, but if, if the Fed had acted a year ago instead of when it did, first action was in March. Um, I'm trying to try to do is slow this thing down because it's. Something is transitory. Shorted plates or what? Um, we examine this. Well, here's one real problem. This transistor right here, yellow one, the lead is broken or not soldered. Look, look at the base of that resistor right there. Right there at the tip of my finger, see that? That'd be a transitory connection. I resoldered that and that got rid of the But it's deaf now, it's just a whisper. Well, what the hell is going on here? I think maybe that IF transistor that we were, was loose is bad because I'm not seeing any gain. But I got gain on this one. Need an exit of I'm not seeing that here. I'm going to pull that out and check it. Well, this is a weird one. I think the first IF transformer is bad because I got a signal going into it. I got the transistor out. I got nothing but hiss coming out. That is so weird. The hive. Okay, these jars are going to Jakarta. The transistor doesn't test bad. It tests a little leaky, but not bad. In this is an NPN germanium transistor. You can tell by the forward voltage. I'm really thinking it got a bad IF transformer here. Seemed kind of intermittent, you know. It seemed like it was coming and going. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I changed the first IF transistor. It's the same thing. This is 
turning into another tough one. Some of these are either easy or extraordinarily difficult. I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit stumped on this one. I don't know if, I don't, I'm having a hard time figuring out where the lack of gain is. So if I put the signal tracer at halfway, That's coming out of the audio driver transistor. That's going into the audio driver transistor. That's coming out of the second IF. That's going into the volume control. These three are the volume control. Ground center tap, which goes through a capacitor to the audio driver. And then if I come over here to the audio output. Martinez. If you're a homeowner. So, I mean. To make that big monthly payment. Call HMS to discuss a 30 year loan. And then we just got absolutely a whisper. I think I need to grab another different radio and compare it. Because I'm really kind of lost here as to what my level should be. Is it is it weak coming out of the IF? Is it shorted audio transformers? What's going on here? This is just a single IF stage radio. And listen to the strength of this going into the volume control. And that's not even on a really strong station. So let me go back to this one. Okay. Just nothing, not even detectable. Not even detectable. So it's definitely weak coming out of the IF on this one. So to make this whole thing a lot more confusing, I looked through the Sam's book and I found a Jewel Model 10. And yeah, you know, this looks pretty close. In fact, it looks exactly the same. And right? Same thing. And the the board looks pretty much the same except it's missing two of the audio output transistors that this one has. And you come over here and you look at the schematic. And this is all PNP germanium. And you can see here that, if you can see that, the battery positive is connected to, there you go, the battery positive is connected to ground or the chassis. And battery positive, so that would make our set backwards, but this set uses all germanium transistors. I mean, I'm sorry, PNP, you can see the arrow is pointing in. On PNP, the arrow points in. So I really want to replace these two transistors, and I am just so screwed up. Because it's like this set is a combination of NPN and PNP. How the hell did they get away with this? I guess it was all about what transistors were cheap at the time and they just flipped everything around. Yeah, this, this is super confusing. I put two, I replaced both IF transistors with Soviet GT311. The GT311 is an NPN transistor. Verified the leads with this. Checked the voltages. 
check the bias. It's got 7 volts collector to emitter and 0.235 base to emitter. Looks good. This is one stubborn puppy. It's like even these don't test right. See the little tab right there on the transistor? That's supposed to be emitter and that's in the third. That's in pin number three. See this? And both of these test like that where the the uh, tab marks collector. I always thought the tab marked emitter. Maybe that's on NPN germanium transistors. This one measures correctly. The tab is the emitter, number three. I wonder if these are some third way rate throwaway transistors they used in this. You know, just junk that wouldn't make the cut was incorrectly manufactured. I put the original transistors back in because changing them didn't affect it and I'm just inspecting it and I found a lead here that's not soldered. That goes to a capacitor. I don't think that's going to make any difference but maybe I should just like inspect this thing. Let's see how it responds to alignment. I'm on 455 plus 3. This is a very powerful generator. And Why is that peaking all the way down? Why is there no real peak to these? Boy, that is deaf as a post. That one's all the way down and it's... Now these should have a very sharp peak. And this one. That's the oscillator coil. That really shouldn't make any difference. Well why is this one all the way down? Yeah, this thing ain't right. So only this one has a peak. See how this one has a defined peak? All the rest of them should be the same.
try something. Let's see where it's tuning in. Let's do a uh, 600. No, no, frequency. Six hundred kilohertz. Way too high. Let's bring that down to about there. Freaking core. God, now it's even deafer. This thing, something is way off here. That's 870. That thing's all the way tightened down. Why is why is the oscillator coil affecting the sensitivity? That is not affecting the speed of the oscillator. This should move the whole dial up and down. So if I loosen that up, that
this thing's not working right at all. The front end is not working right. Okay, what just happened? Come on, save me, Officer Tatum. What happened? So this should adjust, you adjust this at 600 kilohertz, you use this to adjust the bottom of the band. You use this to adjust the position of the top of the band, then you sort of peak this at the top of the band, the trimmer capacitor. But this, you use this and you sort of rock this back and forth to find the most sensitive at the bottom of the band and you just kind of go around in circles. Um, what's going on here? Something... Turns out no one was stabbed. Officer Shawnee killed me. It takes a dump. Something's not right here. Duh. Okay, I think what we need to do is we need to look at the oscillator on the scope because this is the oscillator coil and it is not working as an oscillator coil. This oscillator, IF1, IF2, converter. Sorry. Oscillator, IF1, IF2, IF3. What's weird is this should be red and then yellow, white, black. That's right. What a weird... Let me email the owner of this and see what he did. See if he changed something here. It's, it's working better, but why does the oscillator adjustment adjust the sensitivity? I mean, it should, but as you rock this back and forth and dial the get the capacitor and antenna trimmer for the capacitor dialed in. I understand it. I'm going to have to think about how to explain it. Let's do a little comparison here. You can see how much more sensitive this one is. Yeah, let's do a little comparison. See how narrow that is? See how narrow those are compared to the jewel radio? I received a message back from the owner and I'll just read it here. Uh, I asked if it had ever worked and what the deal was with it and he said yes it did work. Then after sitting for many years it did nothing. That's when I noticed the output transformer was hot to the touch. I replaced the two output transistors and several capacitors. 
after that I was able to get only one station. I did not try any alignments. I just thought that maybe the IF transistor might have gone bad. I think I lost track of the emitter base collector and that might have that one in wrong. So I, I asked for more clarification on that. But I don't think we have any transistors in wrong. I think we might have bad IF transformer capacitors, especially the black one there that has no, that's basically screwed all the way down and has no defined uh, peak. So I'm going to pull those off the board and I'm just going to use compressed air to do it, which is a little messy, but it's a lot cheaper than that solder wick stuff. So I'm thinking we might have a problem with black and white. Uh, these two right here. Oh, I did hook the scope up to the oscillator and check it, and it's perfect. And the reason why that core is not red is because that's a different type of oscillator transformer because this uses a separate oscillator and mixer and not a converter. It uses a different configuration of oscillator coil. So that's why that one's not red. But yellow, white, and black should be the same. Yeah, the oscillator is working fine. So no problem there. And I'm pretty sure I substituted the mixer and both IF transistors. So I'm really looking at those. We know those go bad. The little tubular ceramic capacitors in the IF transformers. I did check all of the DC voltages on the IF transistors. They are all biased. Um, and you know, sometimes with these things, you just have to start changing parts, especially when it comes to things like IF transformers and coils and that. And I wonder if these are the standardized IF transformers. This is a bit old, being from 63 or 62 or whatever it was. So I'm going to see if the ones from the Chinese kit will work in here. And we, we could substitute them and see what's up. I pulled the second and third IF transformer out. That's the yellow and, no, white and black. And I've been through this before. You can see these have little capacitors in the bottom. And this doesn't zoom in that close, but see how the one on the left, the little ceramic tubular capacitor has all that black oxidation crap on that. We worked on a radio here with one of those that was bad in the first IF transformer. And that thing squealed like a toddler on Epstein Island. Now this is not doing that. This is just low sensitivity. So what I'm going to do is I took the black and white out of this which is a Chinese kit radio and I'm gonna stick those in there I don't know if they're the same I don't know if they're configured the same they ohm out different and I know DC resistance has nothing to do with the tuning of a coil so I'm gonna stick those in here and I clean the board all off see how nice it looks and we'll see what it does and if these fix it if we get a defined peak with these then I will go back and scrape those capacitors out of there try to center those controls out and go with uh, variable capacitors to find the value I was looking on Mauser and they actually had some of these and in the spec sheet it says 180 picofarad. I don't know what that's a reference to. You have to go back and look at the other one that I worked on. And I think it was around that, the yellow one that was bad. The radio just squealed and wouldn't do anything. Yeah, I got just the absolute faintest whisper of KNX. So let me take it and put it on the signal generator. What I don't want to do is start layering problems. I don't want to introduce problems without correcting the main issue because then it might get to a point where it'll be almost impossible to get it back to working order.
that's some weird behavior. What I need to do is kill the oscillator. Good evening, I'm Jan Stevens. Our top local stories is 705. LA County is still on track to re-enter the CDC's high entry. Not just... of the church. Most compelling. Well, I think we can safely say this is the best we've seen at work, correct? Not good, but... Still not really getting a peek on the final one. It's definitely working better than it ever has, so I'm pretty sure the IF transformer capacitors are bad. But I think there's another problem. 
uh, which I'm kind of just discovering because it's working. This light bulb here on the batteries, my current limiting light bulb is 90 milliamps. And this thing should really never exceed 30 to 40 at peak volume. And I'm going to turn the volume all the way up. And this is an 8 ohm speaker, but hold on. That Al Gore was ever ahead of the Vocal Florida ever. And like the first time I heard that was when in one of your movies. So you're not, you're not new to this. Now what made you focus on this? This Zuckerberg's uh, thing, give it to me a new law out there to stop this yeah, I'm going to disconnect the speaker. Yeah, and let me just say... The see the light bulb is still with the speaker disconnected the light bulb is still maybe not it's it's not as bright but that's still 70 milliamps or more where's where's it driving that current into it's got to be well unless the transistors are screwed up which I don't think they are it's got to be shorted turns in the audio output. Because the president has been so adamant about it, we felt that it was a, a, a necessity that the mainstream media lies. I don't know. I mean, the light is still flashing with, with no load. Facebook, Twitter, deplatforms you, takes you, you know, it chokes you out. They, you, your voice is not to be heard, including the New York Post, one of America's oldest newspapers. Two years later, oh, wait a minute, Hunter Biden, what is it? I don't know, it's hard to tell. But that's suspicious. It's drawing way too much current. Could fix this gas crisis today. And he mentioned something I've mentioned on this show over and over and over again. That gas is very, very sensitive to the futures markets, oil and gas, for a number of reasons. Unlike, say, onions, right? Gas, because people need to get that. Gas is a big portion, gas and fuel, of transportation budgets, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I mean, it's important you understand it. And O'Leary brings it up, too. You send a future signal about the future production of gas, you I don't lower know. the price right now in a way you can do a lot more dramatically. I made another mistake here, a lot of those in this video. This disc capacitor right here did not get soldered back in so you notice when I solder when I connect that all of a sudden it dies so I'm gonna tack that in and then try and tweak our transformers and see if I can get it back that would be interesting if you left something disconnected accidentally that fixed it Okay, I'm pretty sure the problem here is where this is a ceramic tube, where that wire is wrapped around the end there and tied is not making contact. Now this one, this one looks a lot better. I don't know if I want to do anything with this one. I have mixed feelings about that. Um, I'm going to gut this one out for sure, and then I'm going to put one of these across the bottom of it, dial it in, measure it, and then hopefully I can put one of these in place. So, I don't know. It's still early in the morning, I'm trying to figure this out. But this one is definitely jacked up. I'm going to just take and pry that out of there. Just gut it. Okay, there it is. Just busted up with a screwdriver. Nothing to it. It's just a piece of thin ceramic. Just push on it and it falls apart. Also, the other thing I did is I went through the video and I tried to put these back where it looked like they were in the video. I, I kind of looked at the gap at the top and the position of the screw slot um, because ideally you would want these at the original alignment before you put these on. I, I don't know. Do I do this one too? I'm, I'm debating this because that one looks that 
capacitor looks good. This is the one that seemed to have no adjustment, but it might not if this one was bad. They, they all work together. You can't have one screwed up and expect the rest to work right. Another tip here, I had to take it back off because I, I assumed that the schematic shows this capacitor connected across the two outer pins. And it's not. I ohmed it out and this is connected to this and this is connected to here. So uh, I had just stuck the capacitor there and it wasn't making any difference. So I had to take it back out. So our capacitor is between this lead and this lead right here. So these are not configured the same as these, the Chinese ones. Two hands. I took it in and aligned it at 455 and the radio is performing a lot better but I'm still not getting a defined peak on the second or third IF transformer. So there's, I think I'm working with multiple problems here and I might try changing that third transistor again or the second IF transistor. Wow, imagine that. It's right on 180 picofarads. So I'm going to put a 180 in there. It doesn't seem like it's fixing it. Um, it doesn't seem like it's fixed it. I tried another transistor. That doesn't fix it. It's a hell of a lot better, but it's not right. I think I just found the second problem. And um, I don't know why I overlooked it, but... I overlooked it and it would make sense why the final IF transformer uh, doesn't seem to have a defined peak. Anyway, I put our 180 picofarad chip capacitor. I need to clean this board up, but it's right here. It's not the solder is not actually as bad as it looks, but check this out. So they're using a transistor as a detector diode here. And listen to this. Listen to if I use something different as a detector diode here. I'm just going to take another another transistor. Having trouble seeing what I'm doing. There's the detector dial that's in there. All of this for a bad freaking detector diode around and around and around and around for hours and hours and freaking hours for a bad detector diode. Really? It's shorted. Freaking shorted. I installed a 1N4448, which is a, like a silicon detector diode, which seems to be working very well. Um, let's take it in and align it. Let's see if we get peaks on all the IF transformers now. I've still got this resistor that adds a little extra bias disconnected. Listen to the difference.
I think I'll hook it back up. It makes it sound better. It's going to make it suck the battery down quicker. Well, to start, we're at negative 17. That's a huge improvement. I need to kill the oscillator on this thing. Um. The camera's interfering. That's still pretty broad. That's real narrow now. Okay, I think we're good. A detector diode really helps. Okay, I took and jumped across the oscillator transistor to kill it. So we didn't have to compete with all the noise. Um, the way I have this coupled, I just have this stuck right here. Just loosely coupled. So now we can see... See how narrow that is? Let's do it with a... Try a non ferrous. That one seems a lot broader. That one's narrow. So that's pretty good. It's pretty good. This thing should be too hot to handle now. Here it is on uh, K Mozart, what used to be LA Oldies. And if it works this good on this, it's uh, working well. So, man, what a pain in the ass. All right. It seems to idle along right about 15 milliamps, which is to me is on a bit on the high side. Now earlier I suspected this transformer might have some shorted turns. I don't really think so now that the radio is working right. 
I had a 4 ohm speaker on it. This is a 16 ohm, 16 ohm speaker. That's the volume all the way down. So I'm going to do a quick chan channel sweep here just to kind of demo how it works. Um, I'm kind of getting burned out on AM radio in Los Angeles. It seems like all it is is uh, Spanish language, Korean, or how bad Biden sucks. And I, I, I'm tired of hearing about how bad Biden sucks. I know Biden sucks. I, I'm tired of hearing it. And of course... The other channels are probably talking about how bad Biden sucks in a different language. So, I, I don't know. I guess the classical station is about the only thing that's left that's tolerable. I mean, KNX is, is, tries to be neutral propaganda, but even they can't deny at this point the direction things are going. So let's do a quick channel sweep. This was one confusing, difficult, irritating... Um, I don't even know what you want to call this. Anyway, we had, the main thing was a bad detector diode, and I believe a bad capacitor in the, the white IF can. The first take. Yes. Don't, don't call him Gerald, one take all right. <laughs> okay, so we'll start at the top of the band, which we're on, uh, uh Black Lives Matter Radio, KBLA. We were in high school at the same time. Also, he was at Lock. Um, we had been friends for a very long time, and uh, I, his sound was, you know, in, 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 in my head. And when I called him, I said, can you play this solo for me? And he says, okay. And he came by and nailed it. It's a hell of a lot of draw for a 9-volt battery. 20 milliamps. Say it's battery's good for 10 to 20 hours. I don't know. Oh yeah, there's some religious stuff too. I forgot about that. I for a big section of the country looking at uh, even places like Illinois. You know what? I guess we could listen to. Let's see if we can get it here. See if I can find it here. Where is our, this is a test, this is only a test. It's not there.
unfortunately all that work and and it sounds like the coils coming apart in the speaker That's volume all the way down. That's on about one. She says the Pelicans will have a federal ban on them to track them. For instance, for releasing them, are they going to have food out there? Are they going to boomerang right back? Well, we'll know if they boomerang right back because we'll have that federal ban on them. McGuire says they're still trying to figure out what the uh -huh. plans. And it's not even necessarily a sin to to have financial reap. There's a little bit of... All that noise is from the camera, that shh. Right there because Peggy Bundy on that show was also That's from the camera. Five seventy, it should go down to five fifty. Let me Anytime you move this one, anytime you shift where the band is, you have to realign the trimmer, the antenna trimmer. So there it is, very good. That we feel from our vantage point here in the present moment to be able to know that those efforts will prove successful. He says a surprisingly effective antidote to anxiety can be simply to realize... So at about normal listening volume... For reassurance from the future, in other words, that your plans are going to turn out just as you had cooked up, your demand for reassurance from the future is one that will definitely never be satisfied. No matter how much you plan, no matter how much you fret, how much extra time you leave to get to the airport, you can't know that things will turn out all right. The struggle for certainty is an intrinsically hopeless one, which means that you have to... So right here is our new diode. Right here is our 180 picofarad capacitor. It's soldered in there good. I know it's hard to see on this camera. I think I discovered something else if you've watched this deep into the video. You saw right at the beginning when I turned it on we had something like 48 milliamps draw one way and 60 the other or something like that. And I assumed that was due to the output transistors and I moved the output transistors around and I configured it so the two MP40s are driving the audio output transformer and the two originals as the drivers and um, here's what I discovered 
So one side of the speaker, those two screws there, one side of the, the speaker frame is grounded. And I think what might have been causing that was the speaker frame was touching the case of one of the transistors. So I'm going to take the speaker out and put transformer tape insulation between the uh, transistors and the speaker. I bent them so they're not touching right now, but... So I just put a piece of tape there. That's transformer insulation tape because I think it was nudging up against these these cases here. It might have been bumping up against one of these and shorting it out. So I would rate the performance of this thing about the same as one of those Honkoidial 2IF stage you know, I mean, just one of those dime a dozen. They're everywhere. I would rate the performance of this about the same. You know, who cares if it's got a separate oscillator and mixer? It's, it's, and four output transistors. It's not kicking the ass of any other 2IF radio. The Soviet stuff really does a lot better because of the way that they use the IF. If you look at the way the IF is fill, is configured on Soviet versus this and how big the antenna is in a Soviet radio, the Soviet radio is antennas twice as long as this. That's the other. That's the other thing we get to listen to now. The summer of rage. The summer of abortion riots. Burn it all down because you can't suck it out. thing is uh this thing's a gas guzzler idling along at 15 milliamps with the volume at minimum that that really seems kind of hot to me for an am radio but anyway there it is
He won't do it, Biden. Why? Because he wants this, folks. He wants it. By the way, I'm going to be addressing this on my Fox show Saturday night at 9. Oh.